the circle, Randon. Shot, rebound, goal! Colorado is terrific. And you play them in Colorado, they're even faster. So I think that really took them two games to adjust to the speed of the Avalanche. Center point, and they score! Center, Stamkos scores! Maroon down low, he scores! And here's Pavel Fransos. That's it for Darcy Kemper. Can't win them all. The yeah, Avs certainly tried, but the two-time champion Tampa Bay Lightning was just a bit too much for the Colorado team tonight. We actually saw a few people in the Tivoli Quad head home early to beat the traffic, but far more diehard fans stuck it out through the final whistle. Thank you for watching Denver 7's Avalanche post-game coverage sponsored by Colorado GMC dealers. I'm Tom Muston. Glad you're with us. Our Andrew Hill is live tonight from right outside the Amelie Arena in Tampa, Florida, and certainly not the game we wanted to see, but we did see a few signs of Avalanche country out there tonight. Oh, definitely. There were definitely plenty of Avalanche fans who made the trek out here to Amelie Arena tonight. I got to tell you, I am finally seeing some smiles from these Bolts fans as they are leaving. That was not the case as they were walking into this arena earlier today. They were on edge and, uh, you know, got to give it to them. They, they got one tonight and it was a resounding win, but I'm blaming it on the humidity. It is hot. It is humid out here and it's getting a little crazy because these fans are have something to cheer about tonight, but hey, they made it a series. These are the two best teams in the NHL. So, and yeah, and I'm hearing the chant. We want the cup. We're going to hear it in Colorado again, too, not to worry. I'm also joined out here by Nick Rothschild and Russell, Russell Haythorn. They're both out here in Tampa Bay tonight. They've been out talking to fans and listening to some of the players. We'll also hear from Colette Bordelon. She was out with Avs fans, some of the diehard Avs fans who showed up at uh, Ball Arena tonight. But first, we want to get straight to Lionel Bienvenu. And Lionel, this was a tough one tonight, and it came down to the goalies, didn't it? Yeah, and uh, Vasilevsky got to his uh, elite self tonight, and we might have a goalie controversy between Kemper and Francois. We'll find out. But yeah, the Lightning won this game. It's not really a big surprise or unexpected. As we said right here on the pregame show today, game three was not going to be the same as game two. Coach Jared Bednar said it. The Avalanche players said it. It wasn't going to be 7 nothing. Nobody expected a sweep. <laughs> Although some said, yeah, we're going to get it. So Tampa Bay got this one at home. They scored six goals after getting shut out two nights ago. The Avs scored two goals after getting seven in game two. But that's what happens when you play sloppy defense and you're playing the two-time defending champs and the best goalie in the league comes alive. Yeah, lightning at home for the first time and... Emily Arena was packed with bodies for bolts. They fed off that energy. Even though the Avs scored first again, they got the fast start they wanted. They got the lead. Miko took the shot in the power play. Gabe Landeskog got it. It was 1-0 again. But the bolts then struck twice in the first. They tied it 1-1. Then Steve Stamkos to Andre Palat. This is unstoppable. Beautiful play. Tampa Bay went up 2-0. Early second now, Josh Manson behind the net. This is bad defense. A terrible turnover. And Nick Paul in front with easy money. Lightning up 3-1. to one. But shortly thereafter, the Avs back on the power play. McCarr to Gabe and Landeskog again. Hi, Captain! His second of the game. It was 3-2. But then it was 4-2. And then this. Pat Maroon skating in on Darcy Kemper and snuck it past him. It was 5-2. And Darcy was done. Jared Bednar made a goalie change. Put Pavel Francouz in net. He also gave up a goal. Bolt's power play, Victor Hedman will take the shot. The puck got behind Frankie, and Corey Perry will knock it in. So 6-2, the final. The Avs leading the series now 2-1 with Game 4 Wednesday night in Tampa. All right, let's go live to Emily Arena in Tampa and sports anchor Nick Rothschild. And Nick, a lot to talk about in this game, but we've said it many times, expect the unexpected in the playoffs. The result of one game doesn't carry over to the next game. Tonight, the Lightning jump back in the series with a strong performance on their home ice. Yeah, Lionel, you tried to talk me off the ledge after game two when I was saying that I didn't see a way for the Lightning to get back in the series before we even got to Tampa. Per usual, you were right, and I was being a little hyperbolic. But I don't think this game was necessarily a reversal of game two. 
the Avs' dominance in Game 2 was was unparalleled. What we saw tonight from the Lightning was a very good performance. Andre Vasilevsky much improved, back closer to what he is normally as one of the best goaltenders in the league. But you have to remember, the Avalanche had another goal wiped off by a very close offsides penalty, and there were several several close calls throughout the game that this game didn't necessarily have to end 6-2. I think it was much closer than maybe that scoreline might indicate. But that being said, I have two major takeaways from this thing. One, I'm not sure we overplayed or, or, or correctly uh, assumed what the impact of Andre Burakovsky's injury would be. We're starting to see the domino effect. Kadri out, Burakovsky out. You're having to bring guys up into the lineup that don't normally play every day or every game. And the Lightning are exploiting matchups in the third and fourth line that we're seeing turn into goals. And I think that's a big deal moving forward. Also moving forward, the biggest of the deals is we have a goalie issue, Lionel. Darcy Kemper was not good tonight. We see what happens when this Avs defense isn't 100% perfect. Kemper was not good enough to make up for that. And Pavel Francouz, I know the fans love him. I'm not so sure he's the guy that can get this done long term here in this series. So Jared Bednar is going to have some things to think through over the next couple days as far as who's going to start in net in game four. Back to you. All right, Nick, your goalie is the most important player on the ice in the playoffs. Vasilevsky, he had uh, 37 saves tonight. Kemper gave up five goals on 22 shots. Frankie gave up one goal on 10 shots. Yeah, goalies now will take center stage heading into uh, game four. We'll go back live to Tampa here from players and coaches in a few minutes, but right now let's send it back to Ann Trujillo. All right, Lionel, thank you for that. Now we saw a whole lot of folks tweeting tonight and really from the Avs fans, they were mostly positive. Uh, Kevin says he's curious how the team will respond in game four. I think we all are, right? He writes, how quickly they move past this could dictate the rest of the series. So, fingers crossed. Yeah, they get a, a day of rest, and then we'll see what happens in game four. Now, the mood a little bit different here. I got to tell you, I'm taking a little bit of abuse out here from some of these fans who are jubilant. But the mood's a little bit different in Colorado. And, yeah, fans for the Avalanche, always very positive. And uh, Colette Bartolon is there in Denver with more fan reaction. Colette? Got to keep your head up no matter what, and you can't win them all. It just never happens. And the crowd here has cleared out from Ball Arena, but I'm here with Serene and Cody. Thanks for sticking around and fighting off that traffic yeah. for me to spend a couple seconds. These two, I saw them dancing the whole time. They were sitting right there in front of us. You guys are having a good time despite that game. What are your thoughts on what you saw out there tonight? Well, I think it was disappointing to see the defense kind of wide open, but nevertheless, it was kind of cool to be in the atmosphere of all the Avs fans. We've been waiting a while to see the Avs in the Stanley Cup Finals, so it was fun to watch, but disappointing also. Yeah, it's, you can't win them all, and sometimes the pucks just don't bounce your way, but um, I think that the team is really mature, and we're going to have no problem putting that game behind us, and we'll, we'll take it in five. Exactly. You just got to move on. And what's exciting is obviously after Wednesday's next game in Tampa, they're coming back to Denver for Friday's game. So that obviously gives, you know, their fans the chance to cheer them on. What are you guys thinking for the rest of this series? You obviously said maybe take it in five. I what think you, five. You think five? What do you think? I think five. Yeah, for sure. I also think Denver doesn't fail to show like it's electric when a team from Denver is in the finals of anything so I think it's really cool to again like watch the Avs in the finals so it yeah. is you can feel all of the energy out here even though it's totally the crowd's cleared you felt it all night long so I was happy to be a part of this tonight and hey Avs in five live from Ball Arena cool. I like it, Colette, and hey, this is a tough series. This is the Stanley Cup Finals, so these are the two best teams. It should be a good competition, and it is. It definitely is. Our Avalanche coverage continues with Russell Haythorne. He's here in Tampa Bay tonight, and Russell, you and I have been following this team for 20-plus years, and you also found some fans who are dedicated, loyal Avs fans here in Tampa. Hey, and we have to keep the faith. That's all we can do, and in fact, we heard from Many Avs faithful who say this series is still ours to lose. And I like what Colette just said a moment ago, Avs in five, that is still a possibility. And in fact, I found these two guys, Ralph and Matt, they came in from Quebec City. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. And guys, tell me about this. I mean, we've got some wonkiness going on behind you with some Lightning fans. I guess they can celebrate tonight, oh. but this is still ours, right? 
I hope so. I mean, I, I think we can bounce back game four. We played two great games, game one and two. And let's just, you know, put that one right back and just go back on it on game four. And we can we can still go easily keep that, have that game four and win it. What do you love about this team, Matt? And why are they so good? Is it their speed? Is it the fact that they all play together? What is it? They are young, they are fast, and it's electrifying to, to see them, them and watch them. And every time, like, Makar is on the ice, you're, like, on top of your feet and praying for something good. So it's pretty amazing. And we're going to be back here in two days for Game 4, and I cannot wait to see him play again. The thing is, you can rattle off the names like Makar, McKinnon, uh, you know, Kadri might be back, who knows? I mean, Hopefully. this team is just loaded, right? Landeskog, obviously. Yeah, a lot of depth in there, and I'm pretty sure, you know, if all the four lines were really, you know, really good, both 200 feet, we're going to have a good game, game four. I'm pretty sure about it. You guys uh, flew in from Quebec City. You paid a pretty penny for these tickets. Was it was it worth it? It's totally worth it. It's a Stanley Cup final, baby, you know? Uh, there's no price for it, but uh, yeah. It's, a, it's an amazing trip, and we're going to be back in game four and win it and win in five in Denver. We love the fact that you guys are Avs fans in Canada. Yeah, awesome. How I mean, does, how does that work? You know, having a dad that was a Nordic fan, it's kind of, you know, from father to son. So I just keep on the... Keep rocking it. Yeah, keep exactly. rocking it, guys. Keep representing, and we'll see you for game four. Yeah. We're going to we're gonna take yeah. this back right. to Denver and game win it five, in game five, right? Yeah. Five, What's yeah. the prediction? Ives in five, next game, 4-0. <laughs> and yours, Ralph? Yeah, we go with that. Ives in, Ives in five, no doubt. We want to lose the cup in Denver. Love you guys. Pleasure right. to meet you Thank both. You. Yeah. So day. obviously not a very good party here in Thunder Alley for Avs fans, but, you know, hey, we're, we're staying positive, and, and uh, we're going to get this thing. We're going to get this series wrapped up at some point. Back to you. I like it. I like it, and that Nordique's blood runs deep in uh, the Colorado Avalanche, so those guys know their, know their hockey, that's for sure. And Russell, one important number to keep in mind for Avalanche fans tonight is 70, and we're talking 70% because that's about how many teams, that's a percentage of how many teams win the Stanley Cup after uh, being ahead 2-1. to one. So, you know, we're staying positive, absolutely. Listen, our coverage is just beginning here on, here on Denver 7, so we are expecting to hear from Avalanche coach here at Bednar, hopefully some of the players here coming up. So stay right there. We will be right back.